gonna talk uh, Calcio Mercato, Lukaku, and some more Calcio Mercato. So let's get into this, guys. I'm just wondering, uh, Alex, who do you support? Which team? Uh, Inter, of course. For Miami. Yeah, pro- well, my, Miami when they have a team, but uh, no, I'm not an Interista going back uh, to my childhood. So I, I will support Inter Miami, and of course, I support the real Inter as well. Great. Uh, what about you, Peter? Um, so I actually, I was uh, always a fan of LA, LA Galaxy, you know, when they first picked up Beckham, I thought it was pretty cool. I think that really started the whole phase of, you know, bigger names starting to come to the MLS. Uh, so that was really cool. Then now I, you know, I ended up at the time I was living in Detroit, Detroit still doesn't have an MLS team, um, living in Los Angeles, but I also am a fan of the LAFC that popped up. It's, uh, it's been, you know, there's been a lot of noise out in L.A., with, you know, even with a new team. Um, I liked New York City FC when Pirlo went over and when they started. I also recognize that they pretty much uh, copied, you know, Inter's logo into their logo for NYC FC. So I had a soft spot for them. Um, I know I'm starting to sound like one of those guys that has like <laughs> teams. But since I don't – I guess the, the, the point is I don't have a specific – singular MLS team that, you know, that I support. So uh, I'm still a free agent and I'm just, you know, appreciating interest in a few, few different teams. Yeah. Cause MLS might need that since uh, all the stars are leaving now to China, all the veteran players from Europe. Me and Alex actually had a conversation about that yesterday. Alex, how do you feel about it now? Well, um, I, I think to me, I look at it a couple different ways. When you have really good players, you start to maybe age out of the big European leagues. I think certain guys will look to the MLS as a great opportunity to market themselves in the United States to American audiences, and maybe they're able to, they're willing to accept a little bit less money to make that sort of a move. And then other players, maybe if they have the type of personality where, you know, they don't want to live as boisterous of a life, they say they're offering me a ton of money to go play in China. A lot of these Chinese clubs will, will pay, you know, players from European clubs about twice uh, the wages they're making for their big clubs. So let me make a move for the money. So I think it, it really depends on what you're looking for. Do you want to be more of a, more of a marketing whiz or just someone who lives a quieter life that counts your money. I think that's what the decision comes down to for a lot of these guys. Yeah. I actually just saw on Twitter an hour ago that uh, MLS took a big hit because uh, Wayne Rooney left to Derby County. Yeah. I, I saw that as well. I, I really did. And I, I just have to, I, I have to wonder if that's maybe a sign of things to come like, like where I am uh, in South Florida. Uh, they're going to be launching uh, Inter Miami, David Beckham's club uh, for the 2020 season. And uh, I just wonder if they're going to really try and make a play for a big recognizable name, because that's something that David Beckham and his partners have teased a little bit. I think they only have three signings to the club so far, two Argentinian players, 19 year olds and, uh, and a young uh, Venezuelan player as well. So they they're kind of yet to try and fill their veteran quota. I just wonder if they're going to be able, be able to go out and sign a recognizable name that's going to really bring fans to the table. Uh, one more question for you, Alex. Who's going to win a title first, Inter Miami or Inter Milan? Oh, my God. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that's, a, that, that's a really tough one. I, I, I might even say Inter Miami because it, no, sounds like no, Alex, no. it, it, it sounds like they're going to be very aggressive. But you know what? You know what? Let, 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 let me say maybe not because uh, I know that Juventus, Juventus has, uh, has ruled the roost in Serie A for the last eight years. But I, I know that there are some signs of, you know, uh, I'm not going to say financial instability, but they do have to make some sales because they're still funding the Cristiano Ronaldo deals and the and the Delict deal from this summer. So maybe there might be an opening in Serie A. Uh, I hope. I'm just going to give you the answer. It could be maybe they'll both win a title the same year. How about that? <laughs> maybe the answer will be a draw. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, by the way, for all the listeners, this is not a biased inter podcast. We're just three interisti here. It's not a problem. So yeah, um, let's get into. Well, if you, you can, if you can tell by our self-deprecation of our teams, you know our our bias only lasts so long. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, listen, are you ready to get into calcio mercato? Born ready. Okay, Peter, I'm going to start with you. I'm going to read out some names for you. 
first from Juventus, and you're just going to rate their whole Mercato, all right? Okay. Um, so they got Sarri as the coach, of course. Delight, Demiral, Danilo with the Cancelo swap. Uh, 42-year-old old man Buffon. And as free agents, uh, Ramsey and Rabiot. Which mark would you give on a scale of 1 to 10 for this Mercato for Juve? Um, I mean, the, the big splash was the Ligt. Uh, everyone else is, I don't know, not that impressive. Um, so, I don't know. I mean, I'd maybe give them, if, if everything stays the way it is right now, I'd probably just, I don't know, I'd probably give them a six. There's, uh, whoa, there's, whoa. I don't know, there, it's just, the team's not balanced enough. That's, that's where, where my look on, on them is. Okay, if you give a six, then I'll put you on the spot. Um, which place will they finish in Serie A this year? They are going to finish. What? Alex, are you alive yep. after the statement? <laughs> I'm flatlining. I'm flatlining. <laughs> but uh, I, I'm not, honestly, I'm not too far off where Peter is on the 1 to 10. I'd probably go 7. Uh, I'd go a little bit higher only because when you make a couple of relatively big Bosman or free transfers like they did with, uh, with Rabio and Aaron Ramsey, that, that's always impressive business to me. Uh, and and Delict is just a huge signing, but I listen. I know that Sadi has a, a very crowd pleasing style, but I almost feel like just for the purposes of winning at all costs, I feel like Sadi is a downgrade from Allegri. Uh, and I, I look at uh, Danilo being a downgrade a downgrade from Cancelo. So it, it, right now, it's it's hard for me to give them any higher than a seven, and I only do that because of the relatively you know good prices they've gotten on some of the business that they made but as far as where they'll finish unfortunately i expect them to finish top once again that sucks i mean uh i'm gonna i'm gonna talk about this a bit later because i want to touch up upon the financial thing that's going on at juventus right now culture and finance reported uh two hours ago on twitter that it might not be enough to sell dibala just to cover up the expenses from Cristiano Ronaldo and the lights. So they will have to sell Higuain, Mandzukic, and uh, perhaps Matuidi. So Juve is in uh, big trouble. And that's good. And so Juve, Juve has a, Juve has a, their attack is, is out of this world. They have a ridiculous attack and they've gone all in on that. Their defense, you know, it's not the defense that it once was. Yeah, they signed the licks to, to, you know, freshen the defense up. But ever since they signed the kid, they've, they've gotten scored on left and right. He scored an own goal. You know, it's, it's going to be different. It's going to be an adjustment period. Plus, they're changing the entire system, too, with Saudi. And that's going to take some time, time, some time to gel. But you know what? Uh, I agree with you about the defensive part. But look, they lost Kian. How do you pronounce his name right? Kian? Kane? Kane. Kane, the, Kane, the Kane. Kane. Yeah. Kane. Oh, like Kane. Harry Kane. Okay. Uh, exactly. Yeah, they lost Kane. Uh, they're about to lose Dybala. I doubt he's going to stay after they wanted to give him uh, to Man United. And Higuain is already pretty old, let's say. And uh, Mandzukic. Yeah, but Higuain doesn't want to leave, though. Higuain does, does not want to leave United. He yeah, but that, that anywhere, else, anywhere else that Higuain goes, he's, you know, it's going to be a, a huge step down. And he doesn't want that. But season. That's going to be interesting, actually. Well, so for him, and it's going to make it a lot more difficult for him. Meanwhile, their, their midfield is still, you know, mediocre, especially compared to, like, the top European teams. And their defense is, you know, not a strong point like it used to be. So, yeah, they have a great attack. Uh, and Sarri's system is mostly focused on that. But it's that's what I'm saying. Like, this is a year. I think Napoli have an advantage their second year with Ancelotti, where he was able to assess for an entire season and then do their Mercado fixing the holes that he found so now they're they're in a group. So Napoli, you know, I've got I've got them going up from from their previous season, and the same thing the same thing with us. We've always had a strong squad, but we've just missed, you know, a coach of the level of Inter. Spalletti was very philosophical and was great and put you know some uh, some continuity. And uh, we lost Peter. And, and, you know, just uh, I, I got to add something to what, what Peter said there a little bit earlier. I think if there is an opportunity to see Juventus drop a little bit in Serie A this season, it, it may come from the fact that uh, I, I think just the whole learning curve and adjustment period to Saudi's system might take a little while. I think you're seeing it 
take a little while even in the preseason, whereas uh, like I, I've watched on, on the pitch, aside from the fact that the squad is far from complete, they have no strikers. Uh, I've loved what I've seen from Inter adjusting to Conte's si- system. I think mm-hmm. they've done a very nice job overall. And I think uh, Juventus is uh, sort of their transition into Saudi ball is taking much longer. So if that can bleed into, uh, into the regular season coming up, I think there is an opportunity there. If Napoli and if Inter can both have really nice starts to the campaign, then maybe Juventus is playing catch up in the second part of the season. No, I agree with you. The only thing is, uh, I was being a bit biased uh, on my last pod. I called that, uh, I said that Inter is going to win the Scudetto this year just because of Conte. But we'll have to see until the end of the Mercato what happens with us. But we're going to get to Inter in a bit because I want to talk a bit about Milan. And I'm going to do the same game with you, Alex. Uh, I'm going to call out the transfers and you're going to give the rating for their Mercato. All right? Sure. Uh, so they got Gianpaolo as the coach, uh, the kid, uh, the wonder kid, some Milanese call him, Leao from Lille, Benasser from Empoli, Tior Hernandez from Real Madrid, and Krunic from uh, Empoli. And possibly they're going to be getting Correa. And they didn't lose Donnarumma because Di Marzio in the beginning of Mercato said that Donnarumma is going to PSG for uh, financial fair play. And actually I was surprised with what Milan has, been, uh, has done in uh, Mercato. What do you think from 1 till 10? And for that reason, I have to grade Milan on a different scale than I grade Juventus. So I, I give Milan uh, an eight to an eight and a half, considering where they are, right? Because obviously you're throwing out names that are, you know, younger players getting opportunities for a bigger club. But that's exactly the way that Milan needs to build. And I think that uh, Giampaolo especially, I, I think, is someone that they can build around for a couple of seasons to sort of bridge the gap from point A to point B. This is not a club that's expected to, you know, really even finish top three. They're going to be hoping to try and finish top four, maybe sneak into the fourth place spot this coming year. So, uh, you know, we've seen Milan, uh, especially when they had the brief Chinese ownership, throwing a lot of money, a lot of bad money to try and fix the problems quickly. I think they've now come to the full realization that they need to revamp the project the same way that Inter had to do when Tohir first came in and Suning first came in. So, uh, obviously, the names are not as big for what Milan got compared to what Juventus has brought in. But I think as far as Milan identifying where they are and where they need to be and tailoring a project around that, I think they've had a very good Mercato so far. I agree with you. It's an eight for me. Um, is our friend back there or uh, we lost him? Peter? No, I'm still here. Oh, Peter. Yeah, you want to chip in about uh, Milan and give your rating for them? No, I've been I've been pleasantly surprised by Milan. Um, you know, I honestly for a club that has the resources they have at this given moment, I think they've they've done a great job there. So kudos to them. I'm also really confused at how they've been able to, you know, spend as much as they've spent. Um, I, you <laughs> yeah. know, obviously they were in huge trouble, but I feel where the Inter has so far, because I mean we've gotten you know obviously our big splash was Barella. And, you know, another 20 or 22 million on Lazaro. But other than that, you know, since he was alone, uh, I know I understand that we haven't, you know, bought a striker yet, but we've, what, made maybe 60-ish million in, in expenditures. And we just sold, you know, we just sold a bunch of players too. So I don't know. I'm a little confused at how they've spent. I feel like they haven't really spent uh, or we haven't really spent any more than they have. And for a t- team that, for the last two seasons, Sonny has basically doubled our revenues, you know, we should, and now that we're out of FFP, you know, I thought that we would have a much, uh, you know, much more freedom to then go ahead and, you know, be able to spend big. And maybe we haven't, maybe we've just been saving, you know, our, our proverbial nut uh, in order for, you know, to take care of these strikers later on. Uh, but yeah, I mean, Milan seems to, you know, I'm not sure exactly how they've, they've been able to spend, as they spent so far, but so far I think they brought in they brought in some great players, you know, to, to help them. In the yeah. Match. So Alex, you said that they're going to be either fourth or fifth place. What's your final decision? I, I think I think. Ooh, that's so tough because because uh, I, I I I think they'll be fifth place behind Lazio. I think Lazio will be fourth place. So I think it's uh, I, I still think Juventus takes first, and then I think it's going to be a real fight between Inter and Napoli for second place, and then I, I think I think Lazio will probably be the assuming there's not a, a, a late deal for Milinkovic Savic, I think Lazio is probably fourth place and then Milan's fifth. So that means 10 years in a row, Milan's not going to Champions League. No, sorry, nine, right? It'll be ninth year. Yeah, nine. Wow. 
Is it nine? I thought Milan was there in, uh, was it 12 or 13? I think they were 2011. That was the last year they were in Champions League, no? But I think it was, I 11, think it was 12. They won the Scudetto yeah. in 11. So this would be eight, I think. Okay, okay. I was jumping to conclusions. Uh, uh, Milan was, that's from 2010. They won in 2011. So they would have been in at the very Oh, yeah, yeah. That's right. They're the, right. From the 11 12 season, they would have been in. Yeah, so, you're right. A um, few words about Roma. Uh, they got Fonseca as the coach, um, Mancini, Veterut, Paul Gomez from Betis, Spinazzola, and they're probably going to sell Trigoria. On a scale 1 to 10, guys, where do you rate Roma's Mercato? Oof, maybe a 5. I mean, I just, I, I, I don't know what they're That's doing. That's so generous, man. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't really know. Yeah, they're, they're in chaos. I mean, aside, aside from their, uh, their, their alleged uh, pact that they have with Juventus to, uh, to keep, uh, to keep Inter from, uh, from Jekko, uh, it's, yeah, you're right. Five might be too generous. Four, three or four, more realistic. So we're seeing a tenth place finish for Roma or higher. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, Roma will be battling just to get back into the Europa League. Yeah, uh, yeah I see Lazio having a. System with Simone Inzaghi already, they're more developed. I see Lazio actually going to Champions League over Milan by a few points. You know, the usual Serie A chaos. The race. Champions League fight is going to be in between, exactly like you said, it'll be between Lazio, Milan, and I mean, let's not forget Atalanta too. They're, you know, the same team from last year returning. They know how to play together and they got Luis Muriel. Yeah, I, I wonder that the mm. big thing, guys, that I, I wonder with Atalanta is, um, and, and may, maybe they'll prove me wrong, but do they have the depth? To uh, you know, and yeah, maybe they won't get maybe they won't get beyond the Champions League group stage anyway. But then if they go to Europa League, it's like are, are they gonna are they gonna have the depth to compete in in two three competitions? That, that's what I wonder with them. No, same here. Um, guys, uh, lastly, let's touch uh, touch up on Napoli before getting to the main topic. Inter, of course, uh, Elmas, Manolas, uh, great transfers. But uh, where do you see them finishing? Oof. Uh, sorry, I missed what you said. Are we talking Napoli? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, I was I, just calling out the transfers and uh, yeah, Elmas and Manolo so far as the big names. You know, I, I'm I'm going to be uh, optimistic for Inter, and I say very close fight for second, but I see Napoli finishing third. I think it's going to be only a couple few points separating the two. What about you, Peter? Um, if Napoli can figure out their last signing, whether that's uh, uh, Hamas or someone else of that level, then, you know, I mean, the way I look at it is if they're ever going to win the Scudetto this year, this season, is their shot at doing it. And mm. I mean, as much as I am against Juventus, and but I truly believe that each of those three teams has a legitimate shot this year. I But I would give Napoli the edge over, over both Inter and Juventus. I will too, only if they get Icardi. I feel like if Icardi goes to Napoli, he's going to have 25, 30 goals, at least. He's built for that system. They already got a great squad, and they need a guy who can tap in goals. True. True. If he, if he goes there, it really, really changes the whole landscape. Even though me and Alex uh, talked about this earlier, uh, the dream scenario for Inter would be is uh, Dybala Icardi swap. Even though we don't want to give Icardi to Juventus, of course, but if we can get Dybala, um, I mean, it would be the best uh, transfer in years. I would love Mourinho it. Day, since Mourinho days, we need somebody like a playmaker. Because uh, yeah, let's talk about Inter a bit. Our favorite topic, anyways. Um, how are, are you guys happy? Play. Yeah, go ahead. What's up? No, I was saying, even though, uh, you know, it'd be a, a dream scenario to get Dybala, because Dybala can play that. Uh-oh. Uh-oh, I think we lost Peter. Yeah, we, we lost Peter, and there's not coming back. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> we got like 10 more minutes to the pod. I, I don't even know how to invite him back. But uh, anyways, let's, uh, yeah, let's talk about Dybala Icardi. Yeah, it's obviously um, the idea of handing Ikadi to Juventus. It's painful on that side of it, but this is this is not a normal conversation, right? Because Icardi's situation is so unique. It's so catastrophic. It's so embarrassing in a number of ways. And there are so many signs that have been pointing to him and Juventus uniting uh, regardless. So just I, I think where I'm at on this is, um, 
obviously, if you were to ask me a year ago, any scenario where that would send Icardi to Juventus, I would, I would be physically ill even hearing that brought <laughs> up. But I just think with how far this relationship between Icardi and Inter has just devolved and become so messy, any scenario where you could tell me you're getting Dybala in an Inter uniform, to me, if that, if that, at this point, if that means shipping Icardi to Turin, as painful as that might be, uh, I just think that's the reality of where we sit, that if, if my options would be potentially lose Icardi to Juventus for nothing in a year, you know, sell Icardi to Juventus. In two years, Juventus, actually. In, in two years, right. Yeah, yeah. In two years. Or, or sell him to Juventus now on a massive discount, get, you know, 40 million or something back just because they're, they're desperate to unload him. Those both sound awful to me. Whereas, you know, doing this operation where, because if you do the swap, as we know, you can basically increase the value of both players to, to do whatever's convenient for your book. So it's beneficial to enter. It's beneficial to Juventus. I think that's the closest scenario where everyone could win on that. So I would be all in favor of it because just to add to what I'm saying about the reality of the, the inter Cardi situation is we know there's no repairing the relationship, right? We, we hear, we're hearing Suning talking about giving him the Ramirez treatment where they, they let him rot on the bench until his contract finishes out. That's scary. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it's frightening. And it's frightening that Icardi and Wanda would allow it to get this far because he's 26 years old. Like if, if they would really risk ruining, you know, the latter part of the prime of his career, that's pretty disgusting. But if, if we can get Dybala in return, I, I would probably throw a parade. Like I'd be so thrilled about, <laughs> about you. Uh, well, same. Look, so the situation is this now. The transfer market closes in England on Friday. And uh, some reports were saying that PSG is also after Dybala. And an hour ago, uh, again, I saw on Twitter that Coutinho might be going uh, to Arsenal instead of PSG. And we know that Neymar might leave to Barcelona meaning PSG might go after uh, Dybala. That's our, like, last problem. Because if Dybala uh, stays past that, I mean, I could really see by the end of August the uh, Icardi-Dybala deal happening. And as you said, that's much better than Icardi just running on the bench for two years. Because let's remember, two years ago, he was worth, some were saying, around 100 million or even yeah. 150. Because you don't find those type of strikers every day. There's only five, six great strikers out there. And uh, Icardi is one of them. Well, not last year, but uh, but still. Um, yeah, yeah. And, and you know, I just I, I did see we're talking about the two year thing. I, I saw some report. I don't know if this is true or not because again, the Italian media, you never know. Oh God, that you it, never that know. He, <laughs> that that if apparently there may be a loophole that if Icardi doesn't play in least ten percent of Inter's, if he's not, I guess if he's not on the squad list for at least 10% of Inter's matches this upcoming season. I don't know if that's only Serie A or if that's all competitions, but if he's not on at least 10% of the squad list this coming season, that he could leave for free at the end of this season. So take it with a grain of salt. I don't know if it's true, but it is something I saw. Listen, at the end of the day, I'm going to be okay with Icardi leaving no matter what, if we get uh, Lukaku and Dzeko. Like, uh, I've always been a big fan of Dzeko for years because – to me, he's a Juve killer. He always plays like, uh, good against big teams, also performs well in Champions League. And if he's our backup striker to Lukaku, I mean, that's a dream scenario. And that's not considering that Dybala can come. I guess I'm jumping already way too much. I'm thinking of these great scenarios for Inter right now. We're stuck with uh, Longo as our main striker. Thank yeah. God we got the youngsters as positive. Man, he's been doing... How old is that kid? 16, 17? 17. 17. And is he, he the looks... future? He looks very promising, and I, I, I certainly think they're treating him as the future. They, they've turned down offers for him, which probably shows you one of two things. Number one, they may be learning from the idea that uh, obviously you sell a lot of Primavera players for Plus Valenza, but maybe you have to identify a few that are extra special and try to hold on to them. So maybe they're learning that lesson, but also they must think he's really something special. As you know, we, we've seen him play well in Primavera games. We've seen him look promising in a couple of these these friendlies. So uh, I, I think there there's a chance if maybe if Inter is only able to bring in one new striker and not two new strikers that he might even he might even be on the big club this year. Uh, maybe won't play a whole lot, but he might actually make the senior club. I think there's a chance of that. I actually see him going on loan at the end of the well at the end of the transfer market deadline period. Uh, 
so somewhere to develop like Sassuolo, Udinese, who usually have those great strikers and they become beasts. So, I mean, I would hope he would go to a team that he can play actually right. around, let's say, 20 to 25 games. That would be a dream scenario. You kidding me? For a 17 year old instead of uh, having uh, two games in Coppa Italia. So uh, l- let's see what happens with that. I wanted to touch upon also a Sensi and Barella topic. Who do you see having a bigger year? Uh, I'm going to stick with my gut and say Barella uh, because I don't want to give too much of a knee-jerk reaction. Uh, Sensi has certainly shown more in preseason, but Sensi has been around for longer in preseason, uh, where Barella joined up late after taking some time off after international duty. So I will say that I am incredibly pleasantly surprised by how how comfortable and effective Sensi looks, and it seems like he's perfect for Antonio Conte's system. But I still I see just the the talent and the it factor of Barella. I think he's going to have the bigger impact overall this year. But if Sensi can become, you know, maybe even a, a spot starter, I hope he's not the full time starter because I think there still could be another move made in the midfield. But Sensi, I think, could be very valuable. But I think Barella is going to be the bigger piece. Uh, sticking to midfield, who's your dream scenario? If we could sign one midfielder who can score, who would it be? Let me guess, Milinkovic Savic. Oh yes, that would be beyond the dream scenario. I, I think it would be even uh, it'd be even tough. Like I, I guess I guess if I had to, and I know they play different positions, but if I had to choose one between DiBala and Milinkovic Savic, it would be tough. I'd probably lean to DiBala, but I think either of those would be a dream signing. Yeah, I'm actually starting to get a bit worried because uh, before bedtime, I always keep thinking which formation we're going to be playing with Conte. Imagine I'm that desperate. I haven't seen a title in eight years. I'm giving, uh, yeah, I'm, getting, I'm losing it, you know? So I was thinking, man, if Godin keeps get, getting injured this year, like, are we going to play with Bastoni if we're playing three in the back or D'Ambrosio is going to be that guy? I, I, I think D'Ambrosio's experience and just the fact that uh, he always, he always seems to turn up, right? Every, every time we think, uh, every time we think he's been replaced or every time we think they're done <laughs> with the guy, he, he always ends up proving his worth. I, I think, I think Bastoni can be really good, but I have to give credit to, to D'Ambrosio because he's, he's not, uh, he's not the most skilled player, but uh, I think maybe it's 80% effort and 20% talent that keeps that guy going. I still don't know how I don't have his shirt yet because for the last game of the season, I actually, well, my little brother is a season holder, ticket holder for Inter. And so we went to watch Inter Empoli, the last game. If it wasn't for D'Ambrosio, we would have been in Europa League. You can't imagine how many heart attacks uh, I had actually been in the stadium and witnessing everything in front of the goal. But thank God for D'Ambrosio. I feel like he deserves a contract till 2030. And remember the block, the block he made in the derby as well. The second, uh, the second matchup against Milan, it probably would have been uh, would have been three three. If not for that, that would have been two points down the toilet. Definitely, he saved us at least nine twelve points just from yeah. the saves. Yep. Unbelievable. Yep. Um, listen, Alex, uh, it's too bad that we lost uh, Peter halfway through, but uh, thanks for joining the pod. Uh, we should do this sometime again. Yeah, my and, pleasure. Uh, yeah, th- thanks for being here. Nice talking to you. And let- let's hope. Well, actually, this is not a biased spot, but let's hope uh, Inter wins the Scudetto. I would love it. I would love the celebration <laughs> pod you could do after. I- I'd be I'd be walking down the street banging pots and pans. I'd join. <laughs> All right, man. Have a good day. Take care. <laughs> thanks. You too. Thanks, man.